This is Laura Scott, Independent Demonstrator with Stampin' Up! I'm here this evening to help show you how to make a wonderful Easter card that's also a fun fold and it's using the new Daffodil, Daffodil Daydream bundle from Stampin' Up! catalog. It's in the mini uh, January through June catalog, which I will show you here in a moment when I flip my screen around to the, my desktop. So at first, I just want to say hello to everyone. <laughs> I'm going to try to see, get the comments going here. Just taking off my glasses for a moment so you didn't have to see the glare. But I will, I'll remove them again. I hope everybody is enjoying March. Isn't it exciting to be into March? I am thrilled to be into March. Oh, hi. Hi, Debbie. Hi, Melody. <laughs> Thanks for joining tonight. We're going to have some fun. Hi, Phoebe. <laughs> We're going to have some fun making a fun fold card tonight. So I hope you're, you know, ready for that. I'm going to show you what we're going to make tonight. So hang on just a moment. Um, oh, hang on. I'm going to catch up on a few comments. Hi, Anna. Hi, Kathy. So glad you could all join me tonight. Ah, I hope you're enjoying some of this warmer March weather. I am so excited to be in the March myself. <laughs> My kids have tried out for spring sports now, and Jake is going to do volleyball. I think Brett's going to do some more swim team. You know, it's very exciting to be into the throes of spring. I heard birds chirping yesterday right outside my bedroom window, which I don't know if you're like me, but I don't like it right outside my window. I like hearing it, but not at like 6 a.m. right outside my window. <laughs> yes, Melanie, I see your comment. Yes, I am so excited the days are getting longer. I'm a little sad that we're going to, you know, have daylight savings, what, this weekend, I think? And that's going to jump forward so we're gonna it's gonna get darker for a bit but I feel like it catches up really quick after that it doesn't last very long in my opinion but yeah so <laughs> sorry I was trying to help you with the glare but yes Phoebe oh Phoebe says she loves fun folds but we're gonna do one tonight that's a faux fun fold it's still a fun fold but it's like a faux um step up card so we will play with that I'll show you hang on I hope everybody can hear me okay. I, uh, I'm going to get a new speaker, so I'm sorry if you can't hear me perfectly, but... Oh my gosh. Yes. <laughs> Debbie says she can't wait for it to be camper time in April. I totally agree. I love going on hikes and going camping. Um, I shouldn't say camping. Uh, I do a little bit with the scouts, but... I don't do a whole lot of my own, so I'm jealous that you have a camper. I know Kathy has a camper now, too. Oh, so jealous of both of you because I'm not a tent girl. Oh, good. Phoebe says she hears me perfectly. Thank you so much for confirming that. So this is the Daffodil Daydream bundle, which I've had a lot of fun with. And if you have it, um, I hope that you're getting into it because it's a little bit intimidating with all the dyes, but I promise it's not terrible. But before we jump into it too far, I do want to do a, just a tiny bit of housekeeping. Only because we have a couple great specials right now. And it's not in the catalog. So I want to make sure everyone is seeing the Waves of the Ocean promotion. Which uh, if you haven't seen my Facebook Live or YouTube um, video, please jump on there because I think you'll really enjoy that one but it's available from March 1st so it's already going to May 2nd and it's kind of a preview coming up in the next annual catalog coming up in a few months it's going to have the bundle well maybe not bundled I shouldn't say that but it will have the stamp set and the dies which are waves of inspiration stamp set and the waves dies which are just gorgeous but also right now, as supplies last, you have the Waves of the Ocean 12 by 12 designer series paper, which is just gorgeous. The blue foils and the rhinestones uh, base, the wine, ah, rhinestone waves basic jewels. 
So a lot of fun stuff there. So if you didn't know, that's there. There's also a special going on right now. I just want to tell you guys on it's savings are in bloom from um, just for the month of March only March 1st, March 31st. It has some items on discount. So the mini stamp and cut and emboss machine um, is on sale 20% off as well as some bundles. Um, th some items weren't bundles before, but they rebundled them and they put them 20% off. So you have all squared away bundle on that page and then, sorry, upside down. And then you have a lot of other fun ones on here. Art gallery bundle, beauty of friendship, celebrate sunflowers, garden wishes, hydrangea haven, pansy patch, sweet as a peach, seascape, quiet meadow, welcoming window, what's cooking, and wildcats. I'm gonna have to do a, some of these coming up. I have, I just got what's cooking and I think that'll be really fun. Just got a few of these, so we will do some more lives on those, but if you wanna get them on discount now, they're 20% off. So I just wanted to let everyone know that. So now we're gonna um, jump into today's card. I'm sure you're waiting to see what it looks like. Drum roll, please. This is today's card. Isn't that fun? And it stands up like this. So if you can kind of imagine it stand, standing up on your desk, on your mantle. I think this is so great to send in the mail to someone for Easter so that they can have it, you know, out prominent for the holiday. Thank you, Melanie. Melanie said it's beautiful. And then you open up the middle and there is your, where you can sign, which I have a cute little sentiment that's from the Easter friends. Um, I'll show you real quick. That's from the Easter friends stamp set, which I think is just so fun as well. And that's right here. Sending warm and happy wishes this spring. So. Thank you, Debbie. Debbie likes the card as well. Gotta love it. Yay. So that's the card we're going to make tonight. And these are not as bad as they look. <laughs> they look intimidating. But I want you to notice these are duplicates. Stampin' Up! is so wonderful. They gave us duplicates because they figured you might want to make more um, to make it easier to do it all in one cut. You do need all four if you want to make the flower look like this because it's kind of a star because you make one you build one and you build the other and then you crisscross which I'll show you we're gonna do it and then you put the trumpet together to put it on it and then this flower shape are these two dies plus the trumpet and then you can have a little bud which I have I love the little baby bud and then they have the stems which they do it each direction that go on the flower and then some leaves again going each direction and then it's got a little um, butterfly and flower and such and then this cuts out the stamps the other dies cut out this one this stamp and the butterfly so it's not as bad as it looks I promise I promise and I don't promise much <laughs> so we're gonna have some fun so with that, I'm going to get the, set this aside and I'm going to get out the little kit that I have prepped for us today. And you're going to see how easy this fun fold is. You write down these dimensions and I promise you, you are going yeah. to want to do it again and again because you can make it with so many different themes. I could just, um, I did see, um, I'm trying to think of the demonstrator that I happen to notice that she was doing something totally different, but I did write down the dimensions to do it. It was, um, oh, poor woman. I feel bad. I was going to write it down. Um, Kelly Atchison, am I saying it right? I know someone here probably knows how to pronounce her name. I do apologize, Kelly, if I'm mispronouncing it. Um, but yes, that's where I picked it up. So... I will show you some dimensions real quick, just so you know, and we're gonna do some scoring. 
what is the design called for the fun the fold um i heard it called a faux i think it was a faux step up card but i will put it in the description below once i get the exact name i don't want to miss misspeak here phoebe phoebe's asked me what it's called but i will find out um i apologize for not having that for today but we are going to jump into it. There's two pieces involved. One is the base piece. I'm trying to show you, sorry. This piece. And one is the top piece that folds up top. Um, the dimensions, sorry. The dimensions, the larger piece is going to be four and a quarter. Sorry, I'm off the page, off the screen. Four and a quarter by 10. And we're going to score it today at three and a half, seven and eight and a half, which I will do with you just to make sure you know the dimensions. And then this one is gonna be uh, two and three quarters by eight and a half. And that is gonna be scored at three inches. These are in inches, the dimensions, just so you all know. Okay, so I'm just gonna get out my cutter because I do better scoring. Sorry, I'm going to need the wing. I'm going to need the wing today because this is a long one. Okay, so I already have it cut. Again, this one is four and a quarter by 10, but I'm going to score it. And I'm, there is a scoring. The light colored one on your cutter is for just for scoring. So I'm going to start at three and a half. can tell me if I'm talking too loud. I had a couple people tell me they couldn't hear me last time, so I'm trying to talk just a bit louder today. And then this is seven inches is the next one. And then we have eight and a half. Okay on that one and then this one is two and three quarters by eight and a half and we're going to score it at three inches okay and I'm going to put my cutter down all right so now we have this so how do we fold it so and I'm going to show you the card again as an example. We are going to do an organ fold. Okay. So we're going to, sorry, I'm trying to put both of us on the screen at the same time. <laughs> so I'm going to bend the first one this direction. And then I'm going to go the other direction. Got the mountain and the valley and the mountain again. Okay, and I'm gonna use my bone folder to give it a good crease here in a second, but I wanted to show you the other one is gonna be a mountain fold. So I'm going to just fold that. So now, <laughs> yeah, look at pretty things, right? I'm just gonna grab a bone folder real quick, give it a nice crease. Give it a nice crease. This way it stays up nice. Okay. So now, sorry, don't know where the little flake of crafting glitter came from, I think. <laughs> All right, so we've had this now. And then you have this. And this is going to fit onto here when we're ready. Okay? So that's the base. Again, not hard. Two quick little pieces. So I'm going to adhere some DSP onto here. 
as you see some DSP in the back underneath here that goes, oh, sorry flowers, that goes across as well as a couple strips there, which is nice because it doesn't take a lot of your DSP either. And I wanted to tell you this DSP is the B side of some of my favorite paper, which I will show you really quick. I know I've shown you before, but I don't think it will ever get enough airtime. It's called Flowering Fields, and it's in the mini catalog on page 15. So I think every time I order anything, I'm ordering more of this paper because it is so pretty. This one's got a lot of wow factor on this page. And then you have this one, and you get two of each sheet, six different designs, 12 total sheets. So fun. And this just screams spring to me, which is Easter, birthdays, everything. Let me turn this around to see the clouds. More clouds. At least that's what I see as clouds. This is great for gardening type pages or any greenery. Gorgeous purple. And this is the one we're using today. So that's where that came from. And you can pick lighter shades of it or darker shades or mediums. I kind of like the lighter to medium for this event, but that's just me. So that is the Flowering Fields DSP, which is just gorgeous. Okay. So I've got my little strips cut and I'm going to tell you the dimensions for them. These are, this larger piece is one and a quarter by four. And then these are each of these, you need two of them, three quarters by three and a quarter. Okay. So I'm going to, we're going to just go right ahead and if you that. I'm gonna just use some Tombow glue because it's nice and quick for me. It's funny how I never thought I would be a liquid glue girl and I've totally fallen in love with it. Sorry, this one's really full. Cool. It's gonna come out quick today, huh? All right, and there is a little flower design so I wanna make sure that's going upwards. The other beautiful thing especially when you're on camera, because it's hard to line it up. Ah, did I do it? Yeah, that's okay. Oops, sorry guys, I didn't mean to be off the camera. It gives you an extra second to correct. <laughs> if it's not lining up perfectly. So there's that one. And then you do one on this side. I leave a little bit of border around it. I think it gives that similar, oh, I didn't mean to push it. Don't push it. Okay, gives a border around just like any other card that you would have a layering trim around it. Trim space, what do you call that? All right, again, making sure my flowers are upright. Sorry, I think I had to had it in the shadows there. There you go. So I'm bringing up the camera so you can see. You just need it. Sorry if it's not in there perfectly hard to do it through. From a distance and then that, okay? So we have that. Now I'm so I'm not you could go ahead and hit here now, but I think I'm gonna wait. Okay. I think I'm gonna set this aside for a minute. And we're gonna focus on the front of the card, okay? So the next piece is the layer to go on front on the front and i'll tell you the size of this is two and a half by five and a quarter 
So it's gonna go right on the front, but I wanted to give it a little something something. So I did put this through the embossing uh, uh, with a embossing folder, which I had out to show you. Here it is. This is the one I used. It's called Painted Texture, which is my go-to. You've probably seen me use it before. I love it. So that is the one I use for today. Um, and by the power of television, I already have a piece here <laughs> done for us today, just so that it's quick. Uh, so this is going to get glued right on the front. So no time like the present. So it's, I love when it takes basic white paper and magically makes it decorative and gives a little bit of a wow factor. I think embossing folders were an amazing invention. Let's see if I can put this on straight. That'll work. So that's on there and ready to go. So the next thing is we could do the inside or we could do the flowers. Let's do the inside. Ha ha ha. That way we have that out of the way. So coming back to here, we're going to put this right here. But I'm going to just stamp a couple quick things on here to give it some life. So first, my sentiments today, I'm going to use basic gray. Just because I feel like the flowers are just need a little bit of softening. So I'm... Like I told you, I did choose the one from the, um, this sentiment that is from the Easter Friends. It's called, it's sending warm and happy wishes this spring. So, and make room because Laura, I always have to test. Oh, thank you, Phoebe. She asked me what size the piece is that I'm stamping right now. Absolutely. This one is... Um, yes, this one is three and a quarter by four. Thank you for asking. Three and a quarter by four. And it fits in there just perfectly. Appreciate that, Phoebe. Let's see. I'm using my grid paper to try to make sure it's straight. I always cross my fingers because sometimes my stickers are crooked or otherwise. That'll work. Oh, how did I get a fuzzy in there? Somehow I had fuzz. Sorry, I'm going to flip it over. You know me, I'm a little OCD. White cardstock, there's plenty of, and there's two sides of every piece. I do want to make sure I don't see a fuzz. Oops. I don't think there's a fuzz. All right. I don't know how that happened. We'll try it again. Perfect. Okay, much better. All right, so we have that. And I want to do, oh, there's this beautiful stamp of really cool design in here. So I am going to use it. Give it a little pizzazz at the bottom. Hopefully I can center it through your through my camera here. If I can't, you'll have to forgive me because there's not another side to this piece of paper. <laughs> That'll work. <laughs> not totally perfect, but I like it. So then we have a butterfly. Oh, while I have my basic gray out, I am going to go ahead and grab a piece of scrap for the front sentiment, and we're going to use a framelit to cut it out. But this, um, just so you know, this scrap is about um, one inch by three and a quarter, approximately. You might even want to use like an um, one and a quarter inches if you're 
nervous about using framelits afterwards. Uh, let's see. I'm going to use Easter Blessings. Again, I'm going to just give it a little trial stamp. I'm going to make sure it's dark, but not too dark. Try to press down, but not rock it. <laughs> All right. Hopefully with the framelit I can... I'm going to stamp one more time, just in case. That was too crooked. I did not leave myself a lot of extra space. Oop. Well, we're definitely using that side. <laughs> It'll be fine. Okay. So that's the basic gray. All right, I'm gonna put that away. And now I'm going to pull out a color for my butterfly. Where did I put my butterfly stamp? Oh, I knew I mounted it. You guys are all probably yelling, you put it over there. Catching up on the comments, Vita, I'm not sure what filigree means. Filigree. I'm sure. I'm sure I'm supposed to know what that means, but I don't. All right, so I'm gonna give it a little flying butterfly. Voila. Okay, so we got the butterfly on there. Knocking stuff over. Got a lot here. Oh, okay. She says that's the decorative image under the stamped first. Thank you, Phoebe. Appreciate you explaining that. So we have the inside done. So I'm going to go ahead and just put it right on there. And no one will see my whoopsie sign no one will know <laughs> just all of you all right there you go so that's all done and ready to go so that that one is completely ready for when we attach this it will be all set so I'm going to wait on cutting this out because we're going to cut out some flowers. But first, I wanted to show you how what I used to color the flower pieces. Okay, so I'm going to set this aside real quick to show you. And what I used was watercoloring. And so when I watercolor, I grab a board. And I grab some of the watercolor paper from Stampin' Up and I cut it into three strips because I'm doing three different colors here. And this watercolor paper is in the annual catalog on page 136. It's called Fluid 100 and they come in five by seven sheets. Uh, package looks like this. So it's Fluid Watercolor Paper. Okay, and that is by Stampin' Up. And I have three different sheets because I'm gonna do three different colors. One is gonna be the green for the leaves. And then I'm doing two different colors for the flower itself because I'm gonna want, I'm even gonna do try to do it a little bit more deep differentiation because you'll see there's a little bit. I didn't want it to be a flat color. I wanted to have some contrast in there. So we're gonna do some of that. So I'm gonna put this aside so I don't get ink on it, but I'm gonna show you how quick and easy this is. So first, um, sorry, try not to say, um, where'd that come from? All right, so I'm just gonna take a board and you can do it on anything. If you might even have one of those glass plates 
just anything to, I tape it down just so that it doesn't move while I am here. I'm gonna to try to get this more in the camera. I'm just gonna put this, just a few, what I'm using here is 3M crafting tape. There's lots of different tapes you could use. There's that, even there's, what is it, that duct tape. There's even now a really um, less adhesive, what is it called? Less, it's not less sticky. I've, I'm sorry, there's a duct tape too. But this one is 3M crafting tape. So it comes off real easy. Sorry, I got a little doggy hair in there. These puppies. So, oh, okay. Two ways to do it. One, you can take an ink pad and the colors I'm using are, there's Daffodil Delight, Mango Melody, we already used the basic gray, and I'm, I'm using Pear Pizzazz for the greens, and I may use a little of the Calypso Coral on the edge, or Pumpkin Pie, just to give a little bit of something, something with a blending brush. So, but I wanna show you first how quick and easy this is to do. So you can take a ink pad and you just take your block, one of your empty blocks and you just do that. And you suddenly have color ink on your block. Okay. And then you take the water coloring brushes, which are in the annual catalog. Sorry, I don't know what page, but they're in with all the other little tools in the back of the catalog. Squeeze out, oh, I don't know if I'm on camera, sorry. Squeeze out just a little water in there. Mix it up. And you can use, if you have one of those giant blocks, you can use that. No. Or even some people use the, um, some people even use one of these um, silicone craft sheets. You can use that as well, I hear. I have not used that. Always fun to try. So one of these I'm gonna have just a light yellow and the other one I'm gonna do more of a darker. But look how quick this is. You just lay it down. Just lay down your color. And you don't need it to be uniform. You don't want it to be uniform. You want this flower to have some variation to it, a little life to it. You don't want a flat color. That's one reason why I'm doing this. I personally went through all the DSP and there is some gorgeous paper, even the new, um, sorry, I'm picking up a little fuzz. I don't want to. You always have to have a paper towel nearby when you watercolor. I'm just going to get that off of there. Okay. All right. So. Gonna keep laying down a little bit of color here. Sorry, I'm trying to pick up that fuzzy. Get off my sheet. Yep. So you just cover this up really quick. And since if you use the long strokes, it really does go fast. Especially when you don't need it to be a dark color. Could even use so saffron for the daffodil if you want a lighter yellow. This is daffodil delight. Okay, done. And then clean your brush on the paper towel. You just squeeze a little water out as you go, and it starts going clear. You're good. Close that up. Love my watercolor brush. I leave that sitting like in my pen holder on my desk. On my crafting desk I use it all the time and then what you're seeing me do off camera sorry not seeing me do off camera that is it's just wipe that off done ready for my next color now the other way to get ink on here to use is to use refill bottles which I have here my daffodil delight mango melody and pear pizzazz so again if you don't have a refill I wanted you to see that you can just get that right out of the um, ink pad so I'm going to just put a couple drops. So I'm trying not to do this. 
where you can't see it. So I'm just going to add a couple drops of Daffodil Delight. I'm going to add a drop of Mango Melody. Give it a little bit of a contrast. Give it a little something something brighter color there just to give it contrast. So now we're going to do the next one real quick. And again, I'm just going to squeeze out some water. Some people have said, I am no watercolor expert. So some people say that you can saturate your paper a little bit with a little, you know, doing just plain water over it first. I tend, when I'm doing, maybe if I was doing a background, I would go into that. So it really blends well and the colors flow around and that would be really cool if I was doing like a scene. But since I just want to do some petals to a flower and I'm going to be cutting it out, I'm just, look how quick that's going on. Okay, so you just cover the whole thing. That's the easiest way because if you have extra pieces, you can cut out more flowers. You know, so I just cover the whole thing. And these strips, um, just so you know, oh, and I cut them wrong. <laughs> I'm laughing at myself now. I meant to do both the yellow ones from these and this be the green, but it's okay. We'll survive. The, um... For the yellow, for the petals of the flowers, I you have to ignore the fact that I did it wrong myself. Do as I say, not as I do. The two longer pieces, the sizes are two and a half by seven. And since the watercolor paper was five by seven, I just cut it right in half. And that gave me enough to do two different variation colors of the yellow. And then this one, I did mean for this one to be, um, the green petals so ignore that fact that it's the yellow right now but this one is two and a half by six because i didn't need as much space as i did on on the yellow okay so there you go and if this splatters on there like that all i'm going to do to fix this is run out the darker color out of my paintbrush and then i can come back and smooth it out not that splatters are bad we splatter our artwork all the time, don't we? But I would try not to do as I did and be going over an already painted piece. Okay, so you get the idea of that. So let me wipe this off. Again, I just wipe it off with a paper towel. And if you're really adverse to getting a tiny bit of ink on your fingers, you can wear gloves for this part and then take them off. I don't care if my water coloring board gets a little ink on it. <laughs> All right, so the next one, pear pizzazz. We do need it for our petals real quick. This part, doing it with the um, refills if you need to cover a whole piece of paper is faster, but I'm telling you, if you are just coloring a flower or something and you just need a little bit of color, using the ink pad is definitely the way I would go. And when you do this for the flower stems, my stems I picture going up and down, so I definitely would stroke it up and down like this and not side to side because I feel that this gives more of a natural grain look for a flower stem and leaves. Just a little FYI. All right, so you see how quickly that lays down when you put the, use the refill. And again, I don't need this to be perfectly symmetrical because I want my leaves to have a little bit of pizzazz. So you just throw it down. 
If you put it down quicker and not saturate your paper, it will also dry faster. If you need it to dry faster, you can uh, always use a hair dryer or even your heat emboss tool to, to dry it a little bit. Oh, did you guys see what I just did? Sorry. It's okay. This is just for show. Again, I'm going to clean my brush though before I go to my next task. And look at that. It's all ready to go for my next project. I'm just going to put it right back in my pen holder. I leave the water in it. You can do as you like, but it's easy to go. Uh, what was I going to say? Oh, so now you want these to dry a little bit. It doesn't take too terribly long to dry. I want to say, depending on how much water, I mean, how much you saturate it, you can leave it overnight. If you just put it a coat like this, you could probably just go to breakfast, go to lunch. If you know you're going to be working in the morning, lay down your, your colors and then go get your coffee or breakfast. <laughs> so... I just wanted to show you how I watercolored. I do have some already colored for us for today because we're certainly not gonna wait for it to dry. So here is the way it's supposed to be, the two, <laughs> the two and a half by six for the green and the two different colors for two different variations of yellow for the petals of the flower, okay? So now, bear with me one second. Let me grab my mini cut and emboss machine. I want to grab it because it is on special right now. So let's let's use it, right? And it comes with various plates. All right. And it's so tiny, it just sits on the windowsill next to my desk. <laughs> I know space is always a problem. So um, before I open it up, I do want to show you how we're gonna put these framelits on. So what I'm gonna do is cut, I need three leaves for my project. And I need, sorry, three stems. So I'm going to do two this direction. And I'm going to do one this direction. So knowing that I had to come back through a second time. I am just going to try to squish them just a little bit to one side. And I'm going to grab my tape you might have some you might have some washi tape or more of the craft tape hmm I do have the craft tape right here don't I let's use that it, uh, it can go across two at a time if you want all right um Sorry, that was the only piece not being used right now. So I'm gonna jump into, I have a dispenser of scotch, removable scotch tape, which I just love. See that craft tape is not gonna work since it was already damp. So that is damp because it was being used with the watercolor paper. So we'll just go to the removable scotch tape. And I just want to do it this way because I do want I do want to be able to do as many as I can. I've made my beautiful watercolor paper. All right. Sorry, that one twisted. Just stay. Just stay there. Okay. Let's put that out of the way. I'm going to open up my mini just to show you how darn cute it is to use. All right. And this 
has a base plate just like the large machine. And then you have your cutters. Your scratched up sheets, which of course I have minor scratched up just, just a bit. So then, just kind of peeking, making sure it doesn't overlap. And it goes right through. There you go. It'll pop. Oops. I think it went off the thing. Sorry. I'm going to put it through one more time because I didn't have them lined up correctly. And if there's not a plate under your frame, framelits, they're not going to cut out what you want them to cut out. So. You just redid that. Phoebe says she uses the mini machine as much as the big machine. <laughs> yes, she says so convenient when die cutting smaller pieces. And that's what's so beautiful. This, you can sit here at your desk, you know, you don't have to be intimidated by these framelits in this set. Those are all little framelits. Ugh. That, sorry, that tape does not, I guess I got to talking and not paying attention. You peel it off carefully, but you don't have to do it that carefully. It doesn't usually tear. Maybe because it's the watercolor paper? I don't know. I've never had a problem. All right, so I want you to see some of these beautiful stems. Voila, perfect stems. And you can really go to town with variation of color. You can even add a different green in there if you really want it to, to show. I need my handy dandy take your pick tool. If it sticks in there, you just put it into the little hole and it will pop right out. Okay. I just need to put it through one more time because I need one more. And now I don't have to probably put a tape at all because it's just the two. Come on. I think I want them to go to the right. So I'm just gonna put that through one more time. I know a lot of times I do this ahead of time for you guys, but I just wanted you to see how easy it was to use this machine tonight. Because of the beautiful sales going on. So this, you can probably get a little more out of if you want, but I am not this at this point. But trust me, I'm not throwing it away. They pop right out. I think it's just knows that I'm on camera. Okay, so now I've got those all set. I'll push them out of the way so they don't get messed up. And now I'm going to do inies and outies <laughs> of my flowers. Some people like the darker for the inside part of the flower, and some people like it for the back of the flower. So I think I'll do it for the inside. So I'll start with this one. And I just, what I do, sorry, these are what we're doing now. What I do is I just grab all the base, sorry, out of the camera again, all the base pieces, and I just lay them up there. Sorry, I got all out of whack, didn't I? Sorry. All right. Anyway, I just lay them all on, on there, and you cut everything at the same time. So I'm just finding on my sheet all the ones that are not intricate, not like this, all the base ones with a flat section. So I'm just laying all those on here. This is one. 
not that one. This is the back side, the back. See, this is the inner part of the bulb and this is the flat part. So I am just gonna put this through. Just need another plate. Oops. There's a one trying to under go underneath one. Hang on. It knows we're on candy camera. Hold on. I just made it worse. There we go. Sorry, you couldn't see, but one of the framelits here in the back tried to slide underneath another framelit. And what I do sometimes is I just hold it as it comes out and I put it back through to come back through, but hopefully these are just the outer pieces. So hopefully that's not necessary. Oh my God. If you have a metallic sheet like this, I just got this at Stampin' Storage. If you have a metallic sheet like this, you can just put them straight back on. I have to wait on the ones that have paper still in them. Uh, I got some of them out. So then I have more that I can cut out other little flowers from. I'll save that. Hi, Akimi. How are you? We're doing a little watercoloring tonight and making a daffodil. How about you guys? Is anyone getting ready for spring break or any trips coming up now that the weather is turning? I'm uh, getting ready to go to Myrtle Beach for a week for spring break at Easter with the kids because they'll be out of school. I'm doing a girls trip to Lancaster coming up. I just love the spring. I don't know how I got a little black flake on there. Sorry. All right. It happens. It will be covered up. Trust me. All right. Popping all these out. I just love the fact that it's one trip through the machine and you have everything you need for a bouquet. Not just one flower, but a whole bouquet. It's kind of nice. All right, so now I'm just gonna do the dark color. And this time I'm just gonna pull off all the innies and do the same thing. There's all these little pieces, but they're they're really is easy. All right, there we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. We've got it. And you can really play to like say paper. You can see that I was pretty uh, generous with my paper size. Good night, Phoebe. I know she's got to go. I'll talk to you soon. All right, so we're just gonna put this through real quick. And if you think this one's more intricate and you want to give it another pass, you can just bring it right back through. And that should do it. So, I'll move my lovely 
mini stamp and emboss machine aside. Wasn't that fun? I don't have to stand up at a table and crank away. I have lots of extra pa paper to do more flower pieces if I want from that. I'm gonna move these plates aside. Sorry, that was loud. <laughs> I'm gonna pop out just a few of these tiny pieces. Not a lot to it this time. You don't have to worry about a lot of little intricate pieces. It really isn't um, one of those that has a lot to poke out. All right, just give me one moment. There's a few here that I'm just gonna poke out of the, see how easy it is if you just push in that little hole. I love a tool to help you pick up things. <laughs> Gives you any resistance. Oh, this has extra holes because it helps you poke out the center of this one. This one does have a little bit to poke out. And this is his friend. His friend. These are exactly the same. It's just because if you're doing a bouquet, you need two of them. And Stampin' Up! was sweet enough to give us the two so we don't have to put it through more than once. All right, so I'm going to push my little bits aside. I straighten out my disheveled desk. <laughs> and uh, I do want to point out that this is how you reach me at stampingcoasttocoast.stampinup.net or email, at, email me at stampingcoasttocoast at gmail.com. If you want to put in an order, go to my website and use the host code KWC46967. If you have any questions, let me know. All right. So I'm going to set this aside. That's it with the framelits for tonight. We're just going to quickly put these together, and I'm going to show you how easy it is. I know it looks intimidating, but it's really not. For, we'll start with the big one. There is a right and wrong way with these. They fit, but you can totally feel it, if you will. Well, you see how it just fits perfectly like that? You can, I don't know if you can see it, but if I did it a different way, it doesn't fit perfectly. So it's really not hard to quickly find the right fit. I even use my fingers just to feel the edges coming together, if you will. So that's that one. And this is going to go on here. This is going on there. Sorry, that one goes with that one, but I have this one already in my hand. All right, so that's going to go on this one. This one's going to go on this one. Let's see. Nope, I didn't find it right away. Let's see. I'll twist it. There you go. That one fits perfectly. This one is missing its... Huh, where's the any? It's going to annoy me, isn't it? So this one goes on this one. So I need the mini. The any. I don't know where the any went. Oh my goodness. That was not okay. Huh. Did anyone see where the any went on that one? All right. I apologize, but I'm going to have to cut it out again real quick. That was the darker color. I apologize. One second. It looks like I didn't even cut it out because it would be on here. The uh... the image 
the cutout would be on there, but it's not there. All right, sorry. Again, to show you how easy it is to have a little mini machine right there. That's gonna go with that. Put that on my magnet, extras, okay. Here we go. We are going to, you can see how that fits the bump section fits into itself, into each other, I should say. That's how they come together, okay. This one popped apart, but I'm going to put it right back together. Okay. And then each of these, just a little bit. You don't have to worry about going crazy all over it. Just a little bit there. Again, my glue is new, so it probably came out a little more than I wanted to. But I won't wiggle it around too much. Yeah, it is out a tiny bit. It is out just a tiny bit. So that's where you do as I say, not as I do, because what you can do if it comes out, um, sorry, I'm just going to try to get that off with something. If you see that you put too much on, you can always take a little tiny piece of scrap cardstock or something and wipe it off before you lay down your piece. So I... I'm normally better at marking how I took it off, but I didn't, did I? I think I remembered. I think I remembered. All right, there you go. Again, you see how quick it doesn't need a lot of glue all over the place. Just down in the big open area. I'm going to pick it up to smush it a little bit. Smush it. Another great thing about Tombow glue, you can adjust it when you get it off kilter a little bit. There you go. Trust me, it takes a little bit of time on this one, but it is worth it. Got a little glue on my finger. Again, I just use my fingers to kind of, what's the word? I guess I'm shifting it, but in a way I'm almost like, I want to use the word massage. It's so weird, but you know what I mean. Kind of just wiggle it around the tiniest of bits to get it perfectly straight. There you go. The last one. I know, I, it's a hands-on project. I've got to feel that they're straight each time. Okay, so then the easiest ones are these because to finish this flower, you do have to layer them up on each other. You only want the glue in the middle this time because when you do crisscross, the petals are gonna be in the air. Let me just see. 
particles are going to be in the air from each other. You see how I wouldn't want glue under here, here, or I'd be gluing it to my grid paper, right? I'm sorry, I don't know if you saw that. I don't want to put glue here and here and here because I would be gluing my grid paper. So there you go. And then you just want to give it a little funnel. So I'm just going to put a little glue here. I'll just do it this way. And now I'll build another one. So this one has this petal go behind here. I think that is the most non-intuitive piece of this whole project. So it goes like that. So we just put a little glue there. And then I'm going to give that one a, what do you call this? A fun, is funnel the right word? You guys probably know. I don't know what this is called. And you can tilt it. You can make it straight. However you want to put this on. Boom. So now we have another flower bud. See? It's not hard, is it? And look at the color variations from our watercolor. Yeah, it took a minute. But I wanted you to see how worth it is. And of course, of course, I'm going to wink a Stella this puppy for you. Because this is going to be a glittery. And you can do it just on the edge. I tend to do just the whole flower. I'm doing it now so that it's not all over my paint, my front of my card just on a flower, but you may want it all over your card, right? There you go. So now I've got very glittery, very very pretty. Sorry, I got a little glue on there. <laughs> Didn't want to come up. All right. So now that's that. Now it comes together. So now I'm going to take this back and I'll show you the sample again. The way I did it was I brought it together in the middle there to do it like a bouquet. So you just take your stems and you can do a dry, dry run. Oh, I shouldn't have, oh shoot, I shouldn't have glued down the white already because I did cut off the stems there along the edge of the white, but we'll be okay. So I'm gonna do this. Oh, I have one for the butt up there. I have another one for this flower. Sorry, I need them all to come together down here. And then you've got, let's see, I've got a stem going this way, stem going this way. Yes, I realize everything's bounced around. And then this one, I might have to find some green on there later, but <laughs> I already know he's got a little white too. It's okay. All right, so I'm just going to start. Oh, sorry. I meant to finish my dry run. Just want to make sure the flowers will work. So I have a flower kind of toward the top. That's how I liked it. And then I had a flower over here. And then I've got the butt up here somewhere. Okay. So general idea. So all you gotta do Let's take a little glue and 
and just lay them down. The glue can go just in the middle. In case some of it hangs off. Ugh. Sorry, I'm so angry about putting the cap on each time, but let's not do that. So I wanted to keep coming back to the middle here. So let's just do that. And then the next one, let's do this guy up here. So I'm just going to take some glue on the back of this one. I'm going to use this to visualize where I want it. That's good, but I want it to I want it to come to the middle spot again because I know my bow is going to go there. So I'm going to do this one. It's going to come out, uh, let's say about there. Lay down a leaf this direction before I do the last flower. Just to kind of give some height to my project. Now I'm going to lay down my last flower, which I'll do it somewhere around here. Again, I can do this. somewhere around there and then just one last little leaf and then we're going to get out the dimensionals because you know I'm not going to make a card without dimensionals let's see hear my dog getting retro re retromanded again could my, could my puppies ever not get in trouble during the live I don't know so, all right, so now I need some dimensionals to pop these puppies up. Just flipping them over. Oops. All right. So it's just those two that I'm going to get the dimensionals. All right, so we'll just Sorry, being indecisive again. I hate it when I do that. Sorry, guys. Boom. That'll work. <laughs> no wrong way to put a flower down, right? And then, oh, don't stick to my nail. And then this one. That'll work. And then this one, uh-oh, kind of messed up here, but that's okay. We can fix it. If any of you guys have played with this, you'll know that for the bud, the 
the stem actually goes on top and not under. So I need some glue on my little attachment piece. So let's see if we can't fix that. I'm gonna just grab a little tweezers. You can use your take your pick tool. I'm hoping I did not Oh my goodness, glued this sucker down good, didn't I? All right, so there's another way. I'm going to wipe off the glue I just put down. And then I'm going to take a little scissors, little snips to it. It's supposed to lie on top. It fits together nicely but it can still fit together nicely. But instead, I'm just gonna glue this in front of it. It will be fine. No one will be the wiser that I did not do that correctly. <laughs> So there you go. But just so you know, when you go to do it, the green actually gets glued on top of that little tab piece, which is so nice. It fits together just perfectly. They were very smart. All right, so now I'm going to take some long scissors and trim this. This is why I wished I didn't have it on the background yet. Boom. There you go. <laughs> yes, I'll be cleaning that up later. So there you go. So now we just need a faux bow around it and a sentiment. So we have our sentiment here. Oh, I meant to use the mini machine while it was out and available, but that's okay. I'm just going to grab my framelits. For this, I use the tailor-made tags and they're in the annual catalog. And I really like these tags. They're just so great for so many versatile reasons. So I'm just gonna put it through like that real quick. Through the machine. And I want the hole to be on the side up here, okay? Um, just gonna get a little piece of my tape. Hopefully this is straight. There's a little, I got a little friend in there and it bugged me. I know I stamped it crooked, but I was hoping this could fix it. All right, so I'm just gonna tape that down. Give myself room to come out the other side of my desk. There you go, Not that easy. little way in a moment let me just straighten my disheveled desk again okay so we have this we are going to put this on with the dimensional or two Get a little stability I'm gonna do a dry run first I want a bow and as you can see here, I goofed because I grabbed the 2020-2022 in color ribbon, but it's not in the catalog right now, I don't think. But I just matched the My Mango Melody. We could use um, some gold shimmer. 
that is in the catalog. Or we can do some crinkled white seam. So many options that are in the catalog right now. I'm just going to go with this because I have it ready, but I apologize if uh, that bothers you that I don't think it's in the catalog right now, but I'm sorry. Just going to make a quick bow. I say quick, but my fingers don't want to do it the minute I tell you. So any of you have one of those little bow stands with the nails in the board? That is really cool. I do not have one of those. <laughs> what I do is I just kind of do just a standard bunny ear bow and then I pull it back and do it again. Sorry. All right. So we got a little bow. Got the little bow. This is kind of a sad bow. Sometimes you flip it over, it's a little better. <laughs> We're gonna go with the flipped over side. Okay, so now I need my ribbon scissors. Those are the ones nice and sharp. All right, so that's gonna go on there. And then I also used a little bit of, this is from the annual catalog and it is the um, linen thread. Just love linen thread. So what I did was I just chipped off a little piece because I wanted it to look like the tag was a ta was tied to the bow around the flowers. So I just do this little tag thingy. If you ever do like gift tags and such, you just push it through and then pull it back. And you've got yourself a little tag, right? So I don't want too long of tails. So now I can go back after it's through and just trim them off. Throw that anywhere. <laughs> just kidding. So, and this is going to be on here like this. So this is going to go straight on with my dimensionals. And again, I'm constantly double checking make sure that work okay and for this I want a little glue dot which are also in the annual catalog oh. sorry gotta tear off that it's getting quite a tail My stomach growling. I came straight from work. So oh, my bow started to come undone. I hope you have better bow luck than I did. Oh man. All right. I'm not going to worry about it. I say that and I don't stop fussing, right? Let's just try one more pull to see if we can make her look pretty. Blue dot's going to ruin it. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, my goodness. How did that happen? It's all right. It's okay. You know what was supposed to happen with the twine. It was supposed to stay on there. I've never had it just come off. It must have been attached to the glue dot as I pulled this off. Sorry about that, guys. One more quick bow. Because I can't not have a bow on there, right? I can't not have it. All right. One more glue dot. There 
we go. <laughs> Using my tweezers so it doesn't stick to my fingernail again. Don't know why it did that. Okay, things out of the way. So now is an important part is putting it together with the base. So for this, the important thing to know here is that you're going to use tear and tape or some other strong adhesive, okay? And you're just going to put it on down here and up here. So what I'm going to do is estimate the size here. And you can cut it with scissors or tear it. It is tear and tape. And you just, same thing on the other side. Okay, and the tear and tape is also sold with the adhesives in the annual catalog. If you have any trouble finding any of this, please just reach out. Again, you can reach me at stampingcoasttocoast.stampinup.net or stampingcoasttocoast at gmail.com. So, um, so what I'm gonna do is we're gonna do just one side at a time. Sorry, if it's not down good, just give it another little rub. Thank you, Akimi. Akimi really likes the way the card's coming out. All right, there we go. So, close this up. Oh, I did the wrong side. You can tell I'm tired. Oh, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to let that fly in the air for a minute. I meant to leave the adhesive, um, do the long side first. So, sorry about that. But it's all right. Same thing here. Give it a little rub. Oh, come on. Only because you're watching, it's going to give me trouble. There we go. All right. So, you take that off. You line it up to the front, all the way to the bottom, but centered, okay? All the way to the bottom. Okay? And then you take the adhesive off the back off the other side <laughs> and you close it and it's done. It just stays together like that. That is our faux stand card. I'm sorry, maybe not the formal name. I will again put that in the description so you have that going forward. But isn't it pretty? I have to just let you look at this and see if this isn't exactly where you want. You can put another glue dot under there so it doesn't go in front of the blessings but you get such sorry too close such a good card and you got the twinkling flowers Melanie I'm so glad you love it 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 really is cool because I just I can picture family or friends getting this in the mail and taking it out and really having this is a wow card this is a wow card that's what I wanted you guys to have for tonight, just one card, just a wow card so that you could send to your family and friends. And even the inside I think is beautiful. What a sweet sentiment. And it will sit on their desk, mantle, table, windowsill. You know, I think it's really pretty. So. <laughs> that is, that is my card tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm back. Oh, I hope you enjoyed it. Get rid of these glary glasses. I hope you enjoyed it tonight. I know it went a little long. Again, I'm so sorry, but I do tend to do these uh, step-up cards that take a little longer. Don't, don't worry. We'll do some quick cards too. But tonight, I just wanted you to have something really special for Easter in case you wanted to try it for your family. Even if you don't do the flowers, definitely try this faux fun fold card and you can uh, really, you know, 
do some impressive cards for your friends and family. So I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your week and I'll see you in two weeks. Have a great night. Good night.